Joining the Black Rifle Coffee Club is like setting your coffee delivery to autopilot. As a club member, you get your favorite premium BRCC roast delivered fresh to your door with no shipping fees. Just pick your coffee, select the amount, then set the delivery schedule, and you're done. Easy as that. Join the coffee club today to save big on your favorite roasts. Is it weird having a show where just the two of us are doing it? It's a little weird. It is. I don't really know what to talk about. Uh, we can first talk about that mustache and how yes. it's inferior to mine. It's not though. You're just a fully shaven face. Are we rolling, Derek? Yeah, yeah. Is this yeah. okay? It's yeah. it's yours is like it's it's a nice mustache. It's a but great mustache. Why did you decide to not go this thingy? Whatever this is. Uh I trimmed that off because what I what I equate that to is it's like climbing with a rope. You need a little per, you, you, Okay. You, oh, I'm so scared. I've got to have a rope for protection. You're either a fucking grown a mustache or you're not. Is that your segue because I have five o'clock shadow? This no, thing this I, thing grows faster. You're than more my... comfortable with beards in your life. I got it. Oh, okay. That's that, for, for the people listening, that. that's that's a joke that I I'm a homosexual <laughs> and uh, my wife's my beard. It's solid. She's a solid beard though. She is. I mean so is mine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do. I, I do like how uh, my wife is like, "Hey, I want to go. Uh, I want to go see snow. Like, let's go see some snow." I'm like, "Fuck yeah, dude! Fuck my mom yeah. is in Colorado. Like, maybe Montana." She's like, "Let's go to Salt Lake City, Utah." I'm like, "The fucking place we used to live and I work at every single month for like a weekend." Okay, so here we are. Well, Salt but it Lake. turned out to us be doing a podcast, and I think she's running around looking at snow and shopping. So it it, it worked out. It's beautiful this time of year right now. It's wonderful. It is because there is a lot of snow in Salt Lake. And it's it's one of the best, if not the best snow year we've had in five plus years easily. So well, I'm I, excited. I was here like three, two, three weeks ago. Um, and then it, it dumped. It was a ridiculous amount of it inchage. loads. Lots of inchage. Uh, how'd that, how'd that? I think that messed your framing up. Oh, it's I don't perfect. think so. I think it's perfect. it looks great. I think it looks great. I'm. This is like my fourth cold brew today, so I'm going to be fucking wiry. This is my uh, third pour over so uh, for those of you that don't follow me on instagram which i'm sure some of you do and some of you don't i do these pour overs with a chemex or i was using a hario v60 yesterday if you're not into coffee that's fine like you can make it in your mr coffee or do whatever you know inferior coffee thing that you do but you you're missing out if you're doing a really good coffee on proper ratios with temperatures there's nothing like it there really isn't. So I was doing this Hario V60 yesterday, and we were my my favorite part of the the. So I'll rewind a little bit. My favorite part of the company right now, and it has been for a while, is like the exclusive coffee subscription, which you know about. Yeah, of course. You've heard about it. Yeah, once and or twice. Where we do a different small batch roast every month. Typically, it's lighter roasted because on these micro lots, you can really emphasize the flavor and the lighter roast coffees. So I was brewing the uh, Dark Water Secret Society, mm -hmm. which is the la same design that I'm wearing on this this hoodie, because I, I took like six bags of it home and put it in the freezer. And uh, I f fucking love this coffee. Like, it is so good. Do you have, because I've heard it before, but what's your favorite, like, ECS? I mean, we're, we're talking all, what, almost two years now, mm -hmm. so, like, that's a lot of... Do you have one that stands out? The hard part is because the, the coffee doesn't always reflect the design iteration on mm, it. So no. sometimes I love, love, love the design, but it's not the best ECS I've ever had. But then it's... it's, it's Yeah, but you like your coffees darker too, right? So... No, we actually use uh, an espresso machine, Silencer Smooth, every single morning. Yeah, but I go like even lighter than Silencer Smooth and Gunship. True. I like really light coffees. But I do, but I do cold brew. I'm literally almost exclusively a cold brew guy so oh, I, I got you something by the way it's up it's up in my office for christmas i got it like a month ago it, it's a nitro is it cold a big brew sign that says fuck you <laughs> <laughs> it's a nitro cold brew uh dispenser so you can you just make cold brew you fill it up and then you can load in these little nitro things in it and you put Ooh, it in your refrigerator it yeah you put it in your refrigerator it's, yeah it's up in my office my pro move every time i come into town now is i walk the first day into the espresso bar mm -hmm. here at the shop and they give me like a half gallon of cold brew that's right and then i take it back to the hotel room that, that's, that, that is a pro move. that's a total pro move <laughs> well i found myself waking up and i didn't want to drink coffee until no. i got to the office and it was just it wasn't happening it's gross, it's gross. i don't i do not like I, i've been trying to do this whole thing where 
I get up in the morning, I sit in the sauna for at least a half hour before I have coffee, and I don't like that. Like before, before there's there. I read this article about how if you delay your coffee or your caffeine consumption for at least 90 minutes after you wake up, you can, the energy that you get from your first cup of coffee lasts longer. I don't think you need any of that though. You were, (laughs) you are a (laughs) spicy morning person. Oh, I am super spicy. For those of you that don't know, I like to call Matt at like 8.30 in the mornings, typically like after my first yeah. Yeah, that's about right. Around 8, 8.30 typically. Yeah, it's usually about, well, about seven your time, I yeah. think. Eight yeah, my yeah. time. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, and the first thing I do is I go, amped up. oh, sorry, did I wake you up? Because it's, mm-hmm. it's 8.30 or 9.30 his time. And, and then you always just, re- and you go, so what's up? I'm yeah. like, nothing. And I know you want to just unload Fucking something. Blow something up. <laughs> so you're, but you always, you're courteous, courteous at front, you know? What's hey, up? Hey, what's up with you? How's, How's your family? So this motherfucker. No. It's been great. What have you been up to? Like, I feel like we we just want to do this podcast to catch up. Um, yeah. Been you got you got some, some pretty good elk hunting in. I mean, right? Man, I did. I got in. I got in um, California, Colorado, Utah, um, and I had some epic hunts. My wife killed her first elk this year, so that's right. Uh, that's a big deal, and uh, you know, archery like forty yards, something like that. Twenty, I don't know. 40 yards. So don't quote me on that. I don't know. And, um, that was Colorado. I made some, I I had some epic terrain that I was in. I made a really, really horrible mistake, which I will never relive. It's often like I made this mistake. I've, I've talked about it to you at least. I don't know if I ever talked about it on the podcast, but it's one of those mistakes that hurts so bad. You will never, ever do it again. It is deeply ingrained into your DNA. Now I was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I was up in, it, it reminds me of this time, right? So the first target I was ever on, okay. ever. Military target? Yep. Okay. Um, we're stacked up, ready to go in, and breach goes off, and my my thingy was riding on the magazine release of the mm. M4, and I sympathetically made a little, little, uh. little grip, and that dumped my magazine... And then I found myself on the roof with no magazine in my rifle, which is oopsie. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's a self-correcting mistake. Yeah, You're like oh well, it 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 scared me enough that I was like I never did that ever again. Right? It was it was such an acute mistake that it will never happen again. Yeah. Um. So this year, hunting, I made a similar mistake. Okay. Okay. I'm intrigued. Yeah. So. I don't know. I'm four or five days into my hunt and I'm out and this is Southern Colorado and I'm pretty, I'm probably at like eight or 9,000 feet. So I'm up, I'm probably 9,000 feet. I would imagine. Uh, I've been sitting on this hilltop kind of on a spur, which is connected to a Ridge and there's a lot of terrain. It's like really green, lots of Aspens, high altitude, but then down below it's very sagey and a mm. lot of desert flat terrain. So this is high alpine, green, lush, beautiful terrain. It's like the most iconic elk hunting terrain I've ever been in. Yeah. So I'm glassing and glassing, and we're we're kind of looking at this draw as this this looks like a, a good thoroughfare for elk and, and how they're going to traverse in the evenings and how they're going to go from here to here. There's water on both sides. Like, so we, we think there's a good opportunity here. So we, it starts getting later in the evening. We're probably an hour and a half away from oh, a couple hours away. Uh, let's just call it three hours. So we're three hours away from night and we get down into this draw and we're headed up to try to find maybe there's something bugling maybe there's some type of movement we're not exactly sure but that's that's what we're doing i spot out of like the corner of my eye and honestly i have no idea how i I spotted this thing it was like a tiny three inch section of antler that might have been moving three inches i guess i'm good at spotting three inches 
And uh, <laughs> well, you have to look down at it every day. So, <laughs> and uh, so I stop and just like drop down on the ground. Are you archery or, or? I'm archery okay. hunting? So I stop, I drop down on my belly, and I can't move. I'm 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 out enough in the open where I can't move. I can't go up. I can't go down. But I can't really see all that well if, if it's really a bull or not. But I see something moving back there. It looks like an antler. And I get out my binos and sure shit, there's this bull that's sitting in this wallow. What and distance? he's kind of tucked. Oh, he's a couple hundred yards. Okay. But he's tucked down in. There's this, there's a, a meadow out in front of me that kind of drops down. And then it goes up into another little draw. And right in this bottom of this, this, this bowl is a little aspen grove and this elk is just rolling and rolling and rolling around in this wallow. Super cool. And so as we start there, we're, we're watching and we're listening and he's just like having a great time. Like it, it, it it's honestly like watching something take a bubble bath. Like well, rem remember, uh, it reminds me of uh, when we were in Alaska and that first bear we saw on the first day yep. and he was scratching his back and then he rolled down the hill oh, and he was yeah. all playing and having, you're like, dude, this is just like the cutest shit I've seen, even cutest. though I could rip my face off. But yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Big old brown bear just having a good old time like yeah. there at the circus or something. Well, I guess being a brown bear at the circus would probably not be a good time, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm a couple hundred yards. I've got to make moves on this thing. I know it's going to be dark, but the only way I can get up there is I've got to low crawl. And the only way I can low crawl without being seen is I've got to like strip everything down, go super slick. And, and I'm going to have to take a while because the, the grass is just not high enough. So I'm like, you know what? I could, I can commit to this. I like these <laughs> low crawl stocks. I love them for some weird reason, probably because I hate them. And so I spend the next two hours low crawling in on this bull that's, that's just having the, the time of his life in this mud wallow. And I get up to the wallow, no elk. So I've got, I've got a little bit of terrain in between the wallow, right, right on the cusp of it, maybe 15 yards. I've got a little bit of a, a, a defilade. You like that? Solid, solid. Yeah. Uh, between me and the wallow. So I get down in this and... I pop back up, fully expecting there's going to be an elk 15 yards away from me. I'm ready to shoot. There's no elk in the wallow. So I just spent two and a half hours of my life low crawling, trying to get to this elk. Well, then I'm looking at this thing and I'm kind of like, oh, fuck. That was like a total waste of my time. When I turn to my left and this thing is like, eating in the field <laughs> and it hadn't seen me. So I turn around <clears throat> and what's the distance on him now? I'm getting to that. Okay. So I, I turn around and pull out my range finder, like 60 yards, I'm like, Oh, fucking easy chip shot, it, which is not actually, but it's, it's still 60 yards. So I'm like, man, that, but have you ever heard of that saying? I believe it's, Measure twice, cut once. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've quite often I've heard that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you fucking ranged it wrong. <laughs> this dude, he was so dead to rights. Didn't know I was there. Eating. Broadside, just head down, like kind of like kicking mm -hmm. some grass and just like kind of kicking a little mud off himself. This elk had no idea. That I was right there. Wind was perfect. It was in my face. And I got so cocky. <laughs> arranged it. Pulled back. So much time in the pocket that I moved. Because he was moving and I was out. moving. I was like, I was kind of like adjusted my junk. Like, you know, you know, pick, pick the grass off myself. I was just like, you know what? Shit's in the bag, dude. Done. I'm done. My hunt's done. And I shoot, and I was like, wow, that's that's weird. I I didn't really see that arrow hit it. It's weird. How did that work? And I I I shoot, and then he he moves, so he 
So he's like, you didn't startled. see your knock fly over him or anything? Oh just... yeah, my knock flew right over him. But this is this yeah. is where I'm so disconnected from reality and so uh, arrogant mm-hmm. that I'm like, how how is this thing still just? I mean, it just like moved a little bit, so it moved back and then I ranged it again. And this is when I realized I fucked up because when I ranged it again, as it moved back 20 yards, it ranged the same distance. The 68, yeah, <laughs> and so. Uh, I was like, fuck, man. And, uh, so I realized I, I really messed up and uh, it didn't I, present itself again. Well, I'm still confused <laughs> and so arrogant that I'm like that. Okay. But I arranged it. Uh, did I arrange that wrong? I arranged it wrong. So I arranged it again. So I got arranged it again. And by that time, dude was, dude was gone. And then I spent the rest of the time cause there was actually another bull back there so weird there's like two bulls so one was bugling behind me so i snuck in again on the same basic premise of of where i was hunting and tried to get in on another bull and i couldn't get couldn't get there before it was dark so won't do that ever again well i think it's interesting though because sometimes i found in life that uh the more like time and thought you put into something like in a tactical essence or like a shooting you you perform at a lower like level at least for me i when things just happen i'm way i'm way better but yeah. then when it's when i have time to overthink them and you know move my reticle around or or my pin it i tend to tend to fuck that up more often than i do on like a really quick shot that has you know, one second of decision making, like your bear shot, where you just rotated around and shot that bear. Yeah, I didn't want to bring that up, but you know. But that's what you were alluding to. You wanted me no. to bring it up. No, it's and that's totally fine. okay. It was I'm a good totally shot. Fine I'm with happy that. it started it the humble shot. mat thing. Out of all the things, that's the one. Um, but I'm just excited for that to see the world to see that footage it's one so day. Am I. You know, I am too, and get yelled at for killing a brown bear, but that's okay because I enjoy the, the internet is so mean, Matt. They're they're a meanie sometimes, yeah, but you know, it's okay. I'm fine with it. I, I I was listening to uh I was listening to this thing uh Matt Taibbi, have you ever heard of this dude? Mm-mm. So he did the he was the I think one if not the head, we'll call it one of the uh journalists that were dissecting the Twitter files so that oh. Elon released basically. And um He's a, he's an interesting guy. He's been on Rogan a few times, so I I he's got a Substack that I uh, uh, subscribe to, and I'll read his stuff like every now and again. Like it's not like a right. like a regular, but I've been I've been listening to his his podcast around the Twitter files because it's fucking fascinating, it's fucking crazy, and it's so interesting to me that that uh, one th- there were some estimates like DOD estimates that Twitter was 70% bots and fake accounts. Really? 70%, dude. Wow. And this wasn't just... I didn't know it was that high. Yeah, this was... These were not just uh, speculative numbers. These were people putting together numbers, like, like, like datisticians that are putting together legitimate numbers with legitimate research saying these are either bots or they're we'll call it a, a person with multiple different personas that's trying to, to ignite yeah. or gaslight depending on the, on the circumstances. I guess that makes sense. It'd be loud. It's like one person has 10 separate accounts. It's pushing yeah, yeah. the same narrative from mm-hmm. different like communication points. Yeah. That... Uh, it, it's fascinating though to, the, yeah. to, to think it, part of the thing that he was talking about was this incessant need for the, it, it's almost is if social media and there's certain aspects of social media that are extorting people into conformity, meaning like there is hundred percent. I mean, I look at it now. I mean, I fortunately passed a little bit, but I was in like legit. I know everybody says, well, it was ghost band, but like any stranger that would be like, Hey, do you have Instagram? They would type in my name. All my fake accounts would come up before my real one. And then I know, you know I, you I can, built most of them. <laughs> you built most of them. But like you can have a legal activity that is not banned, shadow banned, like illegal yes. activity. And then you can participate in social media as like a professional on like using your constitutional mm-hmm. rights. And like I had a couple of stories pulled down the other day. It was just me showing off like a, a build. And they put it down for community guidelines. Like um, I don't think that was the DEFCON one. It was 
It might have been. Um, yeah. Shout out to Defcon too. Makes best that pistols guy. in the game. It's insane. Those are legit. But uh, like they, they've been banning that stuff, and I know a lot of people. But even TikTok, like you can have pretty much child pornography, sixteen year olds dancing in like yeah, bikinis yeah. or whatever, and they they allow it in their community guidelines, which I absolutely don't agree with. <clears throat> and then you can't even all like I'm pretty much banned off TikTok. Not that I ever used it like a lot, but most all I have if I put get one more strike, I'm banned Seriously? permanently. Mm -hmm. Because just, of just, firearms? Just they 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 ban when I I came in on my ATV. And I had my and I just tossed my gun on the top of my ATV and I walk in my pool. I think I put it on Instagram too. But they they took that down and gave me a full strike before because because of the and gun. I wasn't even like shooting. I wasn't and it's it's fucking because of the gun. Because of the gun. And oh, it wasn't wow. even a primary figure in it. Yeah, it's it's wild. But to your point, what they're doing is they're making, you know, these people, these kids and these young adults that want to become social media famous adhere and conform to their right, social right. guidelines. Yeah. And it's like who fucking developed that? It's the Chinese and then all these woke motherfuckers are, you know, perpetuating it saying, Oh yeah, don't do the guns. It's like you get ridiculed. There was a boxer recently, I think it was uh, was his tank I didn't watch the whole thing, but he said Glock, and like the announcer yelled at him, like "You can't say that." That's Are you awful. serious, it's, dude? The world's gone crazy, like con gone crazy. That's where I love social media and the ability to connect to people and what it does. But man, it is a it's a weird, weird world that we live in over there these days. Yeah, I think I mean, we talk about this quite a bit. I don't know if we've talked about it on the podcast quite a bit, but you know, for eight years, we've had to walk the tightrope of social media yeah. because, you know, obviously with the name Black Rifle Coffee Company, and then when you think about all the gun stuff that we've done, this was a constant and perpetual conversation for years to, to include today as to how do we do gun-related content without getting kicked off platforms. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's been very difficult because I know that it's also something that everybody thinks about. I mean, when we talk to our friends in this space, which contrary to memes, we actually know most everybody in this space because we've been in the gun space for our yeah, entire I'm one of like At this point, <clears throat> I, I can yeah. say I'm one of the OGs. Like, yeah, yeah. So, but well, I mean, we are right. It's like it's yeah. like uh, it's it's super funny when I when I think about some of these guys that are like just kind of coming to the to the firearm space, and it's like. Yeah, dude, we we've been here for like a decade plus. Like, like we know everybody in this space. Yeah, I think <clears> my <throat> first video was 2012, so it's been it's it's all ten it's, years. Yeah, over ten years now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've been going to shot shows since 2005 because damn, yeah, 2005, dude. That was that my first my first shot show was after my first rotation in Iraq. You know, interestingly enough, uh, Tracy, who's a friend of ours in the gun space, she tagged me today, and it's uh, coming up on eight years of the Ranger Up uh, Article 15 SHOT Show party. Oh, that shit. That was just gnarly. And it was just it was kinda, gnarly. It took me back. I'm like, fucking eight years. Uh, I don't think he cares, but the, the funniest story about Brandon Herrera on that, um, bless Brandon, he's a homie, a very close friend of mine, great dude. He couldn't get in to the range 15 party are you serious yeah he was trying to sneak in the way he tells it hilarious he's like man there's like matt best has a party here and it's just so funny to see like he was like trying to i don't even yeah, know if yeah. he was making social media at the time but you know fast forward eight years later it's like i've kind of stepped back a lot as doing that style of content and then he's like one of the bigger names in there and it's it's really cool to see and funny that he he pretty much got kicked out and he wasn't allowed into the party because at capacity and i didn't have the right ticket or whatever the fuck right. but um well, it's wild. It's cool to see the influence, honestly, that yeah. that the brand and that stuff has had on on some of these newer guys, like the Grand Thumbs that are killing it, the the donut operators, the the and they're all close friends of ours, so they're they're great people. Well, then they're they're really good guys. I've also said 100%. this too. It's like the gun and the gun industry is one segment, but then you have the two A space, right, which is actually very eclectic as far as they're very opinionated and. Across the board, when, when I was listening to this this podcast, the two A space has a has a has a narrative out there is like it has multiple different opinions, mm -hmm. and if you don't agree with a subsection of that opinion, it likes to devour itself. Right? It's like yeah. it wants to come in and fucking devour itself. And I'm like, hey, but honestly, this division within the space only causes a disconnect from what we're trying to accomplish is like 
protecting our rights, understanding what's constitutionally acceptable or legal, whatever it is. And I'm not, yeah. I'm not obviously a, a, a trying to, to turn this into that conversation. It's the industry and then the segment, they have very two different narratives. If for instance, in this is uh, a lot of people like to mud suck the NRA, right? I'm like, the NRA is an American institution. It's been around for 50 plus years and inherently it has it has its problems like any organization, right. but it is done a litany of good legislative issues. And not only that, but it provided legitimate safety. And when I say like range safety specific things for the firearms instructing community it didn't for really decades exist before, yeah. Yeah, it didn't exist. So I think, you know, when you think about reputationally what it's gone through because it's been, in, you know, a new, it's been a New York based organization. Uh, you know the the waste or whatever people perceive because I don't know exactly what the the intricacies are involved in it from New York in the marketing di- yeah. the marketing specific stuff to now it's shifted. Is it a Texas organization or something like that? Now? I don't know where they're based out of. But now, it's, a, but. it's an American yeah. institution. It's a it's a, it's but, a, it's but, this icon of what we need, and more importantly, like we shouldn't yeah. be trying to tear these things down. We well, should be trying and to. They're deep like, rooted really, in lobbying yeah. and a lot of things that well, other people like arm. that are more litigious, like uh, um, Firearms Policy Coalition and, and those people. Like they're just it's the same mission, different tactics, yeah. right? And I look at the same thing in the military. If you were use that reference, would be like I make fun of SEALs and how they clear buildings all the time. I'm sure they make fun of Rangers. I'm sure yeah, SF sure. guys like, but same team, different S- tactics, right? Same because team. you've had a previous profession where you've had to cross train, right? It wasn't just, you know, I was in battalion, then you get out and then you work with other organizations or units that required you to have like, you got like a, a tier one unit guy on your team, you got a dev crew guy, and then you got like a former PJ and then a ranger, and then you're doing like CQ, CQB together. And everybody like, ideologically looks yeah, yeah. at it completely yeah. different. They're like, violence of action, motherfuckers, like a ranger away. And then the other people are like, one man clear, like silent. And other, it's just so across the board. But at the end of the day, the mission that they're trying to achieve, shooting fucking bad people in the face and protecting freedom is, so is what we're all in the team in. And to your point, I, I do wish the the 2A space was a little more like that. But it is what it is. You can't, well, I, you I, can't change I, people's perspectives. You can't. But, I wish they were more... Like you can't. Uh, that's the other thing is they're always out trying to out pure purity test. Purity one test, yeah. And it's like, well, but I'm this guy, like, you know, huh? <laughs> I put a lot of that in the internet back in the day. <laughs> lots of lots of bikini snaps yeah. and models, but <laughs> but it's also one of those things. It's like, but that's not attracting soccer moms, which are ultimately the people that we really have to win affect over. and win over. <laughs> When there's the infighting and the constant, incessant need to tear down each and every aspect that is not conforming to one specific narrative, I'm not talking about anything that that we're directly that we've we've experienced. I'm I'm just saying this from a pure rights perspective. Yeah. Right. It's I don't agree with the ACLU ninety percent of the time, but what I do agree with is protecting our first amendment rights. So sometimes we have to agree that having the ability uh, to, right. to say and speak openly yeah. is really important. And there are things that we don't have to agree with across the point other than freedom of speech needs to be protected at all cost. But what I'm getting into with this Twitter conversation directly related to this is these are constitutionally protected rights. It is your you're a law-abiding citizen. You own a firearm, yeah. and now yeah. there's a there's a social narrative, and then a platform that is essentially being subsidized by the taxpayer. By the way, <laughs> yep. because yeah, and they're restricting your ability to speak to people, even though they want to hear from you, based on their individual ideal ideological perspective they're like i don't like guns so we're going to shadow ban a bunch of people related to guns and the the other crazy thing with this twitter thing as they started to unpack the files is there there were no conservatives working at twitter by the way like like none like zero zero black rifle coffee's ready to drink cans give you the perfect balance of convenience and quality If you want a Spartan-level caffeine kick, try Ready to Drink 300, available in caramel vanilla, 
rich mocha, and more. Made with an electrifying blend of MCT oil and amino acids, Ready to Drink 300 packs a serious caffeine punch that will supercharge your day. Ready to Drink 300 is perfect for people who need their coffee quick, and you can find it at blackriflecoffee.com or a convenience store near you. For decades, buying a silencer has been difficult. But in 2005, Silencer Central set out to simplify the suppressor buying process. So what happens when you buy from Silencer Central? Well, they help you find the right silencer for you. They handle the paperwork so you don't have to. And they give you a free NFA gun trust so you can share your suppressor. Silencer Central allows you to pay while you wait. They make sure your purchase is carefully prepped, packaged, and protected until the moment you're approved. Once approved, they deliver it straight to your door. So whether you're planning your next hunt or putting together a range day, you'll enjoy every shot you take with Silencer Central, straight to your front door. So but that this was, that was, was all but coming. That was by design, though. Yeah. It was by design. I mean, they don't want, I mean, most of the people that, that have even closet conservative values and or just constitutionalists, let's not even look at like the, the political spectrum. Is they get they get vetted out real quick. Real you know, quick. They're at the party and go, oh yeah, I shot a twenty two once. They're fired for something probably right down the road. And we've seen it. I mean, we went to we've told that before. We went to Facebook. Yeah. And there was a dude in the nylon ammo sexual shirt. He was getting canceled. escorted out. <laughs> yeah, fucking. Like, He's getting oh, man. escorted out. And it was just bullets that said ammo sexual. I'm like, that shit's yeah. just fucking funny. It's dude. hilarious. But here's the thing that I think, and this is what I, I think about all all the time actually is. When you're when you're in these positions of power and you're using your power in an unconstitutional or with a premise of freedom, right? So I I like to talk about freedom just in the circumstance of freedom is like a buffet, right? You can pick and choose what you want to do, but you still get to pick. It's nice. Mm -hmm. The problem is is that if somebody else is deciding what actually means or what, what's defined as, as freedom and what you have ability or what what you have the ability to choose. Information is a good, a, a good piece to this, which is the federal government, the FBI and the DNC, they were directly restricting different pieces of information that they didn't like. Yeah, I mean, because I, it wasn't conforming to their to, narrative. To their narrative. I mean, I like e even more over the stuff that's come out over like the CDC guidelines that, and like talking about you know uh, anything, e even a question of not anti-vaxxer, but like why should I get this? Where's the science? They're fucking banning that, and like, that, that is that is the most anti-freedom sentiment of all time. Because I think the conversation should happen. What's what other like if if I if for everybody if it was socially cool to not get vaxxed by the way pure blood here, um, then then like we should at least listen to the people why they think we should get vaccine. But it seems that like they conservative were, America is the only people that are like okay let's have the conversation. They're like you evil baby killer. You're like crazy. what the fuck? I just I'm like, just trying to when when oh, did anybody go big pharma is cool? Like when yeah. did anybody <laughs> in the fucking history of ever go? You know what big pharma they have her best interests. They haven't Dude. fucking made sure marijuana never got legalized and holistic treatments. Why? Because that actually might cure you and then no we'd rather treat symptoms so you can be a lifelong patient in the fucking big pharma little bubble and we can put you on antidepressants and which will have a third and fourth order effect to have other complications which will have to medicate you further like sorry i just did, I, I hate big pharma. But, but when did liberals decide that they were going to start backing big pharma and the g it's weird you go back because to when like i grew they, up like they they're hated like, the government the <laughs> it's, it's like the what rage against the machine was uh <laughs> singing fuck you i won't do what yeah. you tell me to fuck a, you i won't do what you tell me to and it's a like, whole no they did it at a at a, at a mandatory vaccine <laughs> and you had to wear it like concert it was yeah. fuck you i won't do tell me put your fucking mask hey. on get him out like, hey, hey, unless you're the government or yeah. Big Pharma, and then I will. <laughs> and then I'll do what exactly what you tell me. I like, world. I like it, and I equate it to <laughs> the rebranding of Volkswagen, right? Mm. What when, when you think about Volkswagen, what do you think of right now? Oh, well, I mean... Hippie vans? Well, you know... Diesel cars, based off of a recent meme um, and Elon's tweet, you mm. know, it's 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 super yeah, yeah. funny. It was started under Nazi Germany, and then you have people saying boycott Tesla because Elon's like believing in freedom of speech and and, and showing crazy. showing what's happening like i'm gonna drive my volkswagen i'm gonna like, drive my volkswagen a, a german no no they're gonna drive a mercedes 
a Bavarian Motor Works, BMW, and a Volkswagen. All three, by the way, were not only built, subsidized, and expanded by the German war machine. Volkswagen was a direct invention by Hitler, that, that stupid little car. I mean, think about how, how fast that rebranding was for Volkswagen, by the mm -hmm. way. They went from being the car that Hitler essentially designed and implemented for a country vehicle to peace and love this is a hippie van in the 1960s. 20 years, two decades. These dudes went from yeah, like... That's true. That's quick. We are it's manufacturing things to kill, I mean, any and all people that, that Hitler didn't like yeah. to, man, I just want to peace, love, and happiness, bro. Dude, Let's hang talk. out on the beach. Yeah. This is talk. Yeah. But it, now you got a guy... And I love these Twitter files, by the way, because I think it's exemplifying so many different things that are like really wrong. Well, it's everything that everybody was saying, but got muted by the very social media platforms mm -hmm. that were participating in fucking yeah. what I believe to be illegal behavior. Well, we saw it. We saw it when when he when he nuked all the trolls off mm -hmm. Twitter. Ninety percent of everything that was out that was out out there circulating like false narrative information around like our company and you and I disappeared overnight. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, because. You have all these people that you know, bought farms and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, and, and it, it, well, it's it, it, like it, we went woke or yeah. whatever it is, and it's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Honestly, I don't even care about that because what what I'm trying to get to in this is conforming to a narrative or putting yourself within a box and then saying I'm going to define myself as this in yeah. order to be on this team. Yeah. I don't agree with that either way. Like I'm not on a team. You know what team I'm on? I'm on my team, man. Yeah. I'm on I'm on I'm on the team freedom, like freedom yeah. of thought. Yeah. And when you start conforming into different parties and or different subject lines and then restricting your information to only conform to one, you know, social gaslit segment of our yeah. population, when you start individually associating yourself with restricting of information and not being able to question everything, which is also the premise of what I do, which being a skeptic and, and being a skeptic and questioning your government and questioning science, that's okay, by the way, because that's part of being intellectually curious and trying mm -hmm. to understand things more, uh, more acutely. But I'm not going to put myself into one of those boxes and say, oh, well, I'm on this team I'm not on that team. I'm on team freedom. That's well, that's the team I'm on. Freedom right. of thought. So right. it's like, yeah, dude, I can listen to, you know, I, I do, by the way, uh, 89.1. I listen to NPR's classical music in my office. And guess what? It's pretty good. Does the news come on? Every now and again, but not really. It's pretty much just classical music 24 hours a day. I'm okay with that. I, I, I can do that. It's kind of cool. I can also listen to... The Daily Wire's newscast in the morning on my, on my on Spotify, so yeah. I can get both sides of different things, and it's it's okay. It's okay to not restrict yourself to certain certain pieces of our, our yeah. But, but I think I think part of social media and where the complexity comes in, it's 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 strictly like psychological, where people who necessarily don't have a personal identifier and they haven't like talk talk about like a persona as far as age gap general interest people have those but when you get probably in the, like my age you know getting those late 30s if you don't have a specific thing to like identify with and a tribe to call your own yeah, yeah. and and social media has like <clears throat> really, I think, ostracize people from their local communities. I mean, you don't hang out with your neighbors as much. It's just no. you, you build these, like, tribal groups on the Internet. And the, the, the way you strengthen your participation in that group is – being you find the leader and you believe what they believe yeah, yeah. And, and i think that's a large part of what you see in social media and they're so terrified to even say something out of like the general interest of the group they're like hey why do i shut the fuck up billy you know yeah. and that goes across the board it goes into like i think this plague and virus of wokeness in america where you can't be a free thinker i mean half the people that walk out of these like he she they fucking c-3po meetings are like this is the dumbest shit ever but you, they can't say they that can't say. but they're the same motherfuckers you run into a cocktail party at their house they're like yeah these pronouns are fucking stupid you're like well fucking say something or be a capitalist and create a company or organization that can be free thinkers 
And that way we don't have to listen to these fucking huge tech companies that are defining what social guidelines we need to fucking participate and live in. And I have to live in a box. That's the thing. Like, so I've stepped away from it a lot. Like people can call me woke or whatever, but like, dude, I have a, I just I built on Christmas. I don't give a fuck. Only behind your back. I don't give a fuck at all. But I like, <laughs> like, I like, I, I like thoroughly enjoy shooting on like Christmas. I fucking drank a bunch of scotch with Mason. We built a fucking little range in my backyard and we're zeroing guns and planking. Like it, that's freedom to me. I get to do what the fuck I want. Um, but the only reason that we've been able to do that over the years is because we've created an institution organization that, that is a free thinking freedom forward business. And I wish more people did that, but I, I, as I a long winded too. way of saying like social media, I think has corrupted a lot of minds mm -hmm. and it's an indoctrination. And in this like social construct that people have to think that they need to participate in. It's just like, fuck you, dude. Like, you know what I am? I'm Matt. Like, yeah. If you want to talk to me about any of my individual issues, like please talk or what I believe in, like please, but, but you can't just bucket me into like one thing. No. You know, cause it's just, it's not, I, I feel like I'm a far more complex human than that than the, to say that I'm like this. But that, but that's, but that's being, so if you're living a real human experience, it's very eclectic and it's, when I say this, it's not like a, it, it's not a, a, a plug for diversity, but it's a very diverse experience. And if you're being a human, you should be out experiencing life kind of like in a 360 degree circumstance. Mm -hmm. You and I, I, I've lived too much to conform to one ideology yeah. and limit myself to a, this very specific box. Yeah. I, I was explaining this to somebody the other day. I was like, I... I feel as if several years ago, and I think war did this for me more than anything else, was it exposed me to what you're, you, you're truly capable of doing. Because what I realized is that it, it, it stripped everything away from, from life and its entire existence in the context of these are the rules that we create that are arbitrary because the only yeah. rules we're was talking it about you and with, I, yeah, we're talking yeah, about yeah. Brian Callen. because yeah. the only it's rules true. that you live by were physics. Mm -hmm. And when you've played life where there are no rules and the only rules are physics, you can't unsee that. You can't unring that bell. Yeah. It becomes really complex, really fast, but it also yeah. becomes very simple. Yeah. And you start to realize humans are pretty simple but life is very complex. Yeah, that's fair. And if if you're if you're just if you're just here to kind of follow blindly along, you know, tribal specific lines, like, yeah, I'm just, you know what, man? Like I'm just not into that. Like I I can have a lot of different friends. That's the other thing about this is like I like spending a time with people that have diverse experiences and they're intellectually curious because people are interesting and it's yeah. okay. You can have like well, lots of different opinions. The, the, I think what I've found getting older and shit is I enjoy hanging out with people, even from a diverse group, but, but they have to have lived, lived right, right. in that. Like even, I, I don't know what, like it'd be like an Aubrey Marcus, right? Like that, he's a, he's that, a weird guy. He, he, I, he's awesome. He's weird to me. Like yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> he's right. But awesome. like the reason I have like really compelling conversations with him is because he's so fucking different than me, but he's yeah, yeah. a really smart guy and he's lived a lot of fucking life that I haven't. He's gone to burning man's and had all this crazy, like things that I've just yeah, never yeah. done. Probably drugs. Like I don't, I drink whiskey, you know? And so, but those are like compelling conversations to have because he actually lived it. The problem I have mm -hmm. when I'm getting older is having to talk to people that have just not really done anything. And the, the span, and I'm not trying to say I'm better. I'm just saying it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's just living life. And like four years of my life has outlived their 35. Yeah. It presents challenges for me. Not to say that I'm smarter. It's just from yeah. an experience side of like, what have you done in your life? Like, show me, like, why do you think the way you think? And when people just hit this developmental brick wall in their like mid twenties and they never kind of go experience life outside their, their comfortability, they don't under, they don't come, they don't understand what trepidation feels like in their body and fear and then overcome it. Like there's all these things that you have to do in life. And as you get older, so you, I, I think to not become that bitter old fucking mm -hmm. person that hates everybody because you've, you live in that box and it keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller and your thinking gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Whereas like, 
I'd be super open to go fucking hang out with like hardcore anti-gun people in New York just to see like, why the fuck do you think this way? But then my expectation would be like, come out to Texas on my ranch and I'll show you what this is fucking about. And I guarantee I'm going to win that conversation when it's done. You know, I, I feel the same way. I think that when, I think as, as a, as a society, right. As a country, as, as a, as a nation that's organized by, somewhat of an arbitrary line around itself with other tinier nations within it that are somewhat arbitrary, ultimately defined by just signs, right? And, and taxation, which is like me just kind of making a flippant statement around our, our country, not in a negative way. I'm saying like we're defining ourselves based on the way that we're unifying around a set of values and how we're defining the country and the, for me, it's still the land of opportunity. It's still the land of freedom. But the problem is, is that you have to exemplify those things. And then you have to, when I say this, as the government, as the Fed is concerned, they have to be able to exemplify that through regulations and law. And when I say that, that's why I truly do. And I think I've, I've, I've actually turned the corner in this, which is they have to start enforcing social media to be a place for freedom freedom of speech because our speech is protected. If you go down the Taibi Twitter rabbit holes, you'll, you'll see, you'll, you'll, or at least you'll hear how the FBI was putting so much pressure on Twitter to restrict certain accounts. And those accounts were just because they had a different opinion as to what they should have been putting out. So the government had a direct hand in manipulating information, the yeah. only information that they wanted out. And they were saying anything that they don't agree with, by the way, yeah. has to be Russian or Chinese. So the, the Hunter laptop thing, they were like completely <laughs> stomping on. And when you think about that, it's like, man, that could have had a huge impact on the, on the election. And oh, by the way, I don't care what you think about the election, I, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just only referring to the, the context of this yeah. specific thing was stomped on yeah. for an intended purpose, and then there was an information operation that was conducted by social media, the DNC, and then directly amplified and or enforced by the FBI. And there is no question about that. So I don't care where you land in the political spectrum, whether yeah. it's left or right, it's irrelevant to me, well, the, the, but that's wrong. Yeah. Because oh, by the way, <laughs> when it's your turn, that's the other thing that they don't, they don't, they're not thinking of, is that they need to always think about these things. Is it's not just me now. It's when is it my turn to be the recipient of this? So if the DNC gets to do it today, the RNC is going to get to do it tomorrow. Both circumstances are wrong, by the way, everyone. Like, that's from my perspective, right? It's like yeah. when you can manipulate power to gain control, which is basically what the Fed likes to do either way. Well, yeah, right? and it's social influence, too. I mean, look at, we're getting super political, but like the. Are like, we? Like, I'm just talking about no, federal no. influence. Well, and I, was, to, I was about to, but yeah. I, I just look at like, you know, the insurrection January 6th or whatever. It's like the, the fact. Badass. You, the, you, that was crazy, the, right, well, man? Well, the fact that <laughs> social. Like national <laughs> social cycles or national media can literally say this is the worst attack since like nine eleven or the Civil War. Like you should just get you should just get fucking banned <laughs> forever. So yeah, but then but then they can just bury the the fucking Hunter Biden laptop thing and wash it down the toilet and just forget about it. Like that that right there is the problem I think across the board. It's just like so we're picky and choosy now about what the American people should know or believe. And the yeah. hard part is is people are busy. They're living their lives, and so they're getting fed like segmented portions of information. And not a lot of people have like the ability or want to go on there and do more, but then they shouldn't jump to conclusions. But I don't, I don't like it. Like just in general, like yeah. I, I just, choose it, it not. sucks when headlines are informing the public. Well, it's memes. It's, it's we, we're, me, we're talking about this. And, yeah. It's like people are getting their news from memes and it's like, I've tried to go to government to, almost falls, you yeah, know? And yeah. then it's like, uh, like what? Uh, no, what? What? Yeah. I, I don't understand I guess this is the other thing. It's like, you know, I worked for the, the government for, I don't know, the majority of my adult life. It's okay to question your government. You should be. Like, we live in a free country for now, and kind of, right, where 
you should be very skeptical of the government. And oh, by the way, it's yeah. not like it's a cabal or an Illuminati. The problem is, is you have elected officials, and ultimately they they are they they're, they're serving their own self interest, and then they can take something. Well, for instance, in this circumstance, they can take what what they saw was a perceived manipulation of information from Russia in the election cycle, and then they can start implementing really powerful tools because they're the government, and that can directly affect our individual lives and our liberty. <clears throat> Once again, why freedom has to be the pillar of what we stand on as far as like the American mm -hmm. values. And I'm not talking about like some type of libertarian, you know, manifesto, because like there's also things that we have to, we, we specifically, collectively, we have to protect it. For instance, in this would be, if we didn't have environmental regulations, I would guarantee there'd be companies that would just overtly pollute and like do all kinds of fucked up things to our environment. So I really like clean air. I really like the, like, oh, yeah. like, like if you buy, if you buy a, a, a chicken breast, you know, it's a real chicken breast within yeah, reason. Yeah. Within Probably reason. Some, we have some steroids in there. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> right. Or they'd yeah. be like, you know, like pumping fucking cattle well, full of like sewage think, think or whatever it is. Too, right. If you've been overseas, you get it right. Yeah, yeah. Because there's so much false packaging and you know, we used to go get Jameson, but it definitely wasn't Jameson. Definitely not. <laughs> it would taste it was like, like, it was like alcohol syrup it, with, uh, it was like yeah. alcohol cough syrup. Like rubbing alcohol with like some brown flavor yeah. like maple syrup in there he's like oh james oh, well, i guess so we get gross. drunk yeah so i guess this is toilet cleaner <laughs> i'm i'm a way out <laughs> we did it i forget a random segue but there's a chavez did you ever have chavez uh whiskey no in iraq okay so we used to drink it it was five dollars a bottle <clears throat> and i put it, it in the sounds good oh sounds so delicious. good dude i put it in the freezer and half of it froze and the other didn't and we pulled it out we're like I don't think that's <laughs> supposed to happen. So half the bottle is frozen and there's this liquid when I'm like, well, what's that liquid? That has to be the alcohol because that don't free. I don't know. It's crazy. What's the, what's the scaredest you've ever been in your life? Like how much fear, I, do you remember a point where you've had so much fear you didn't know how to control it? Interesting. Um, I've actually, I don't really, um, yeah. If you want to get serious, um, it wasn't controllable. I don't know. I, I I manage fear in a very weird way. I'm more I, maybe that in the military, but um, so uh, we had that mass cow when when my team leader and squad leader, um, rest in peace, both passed, and we took a mass cow, and pretty much everybody in my team was injured. Uh, we we clean all the fucking blood out. We do all the stuff we have to do. I'm the only person that can brief what my squad did. So I go to bed, I think it was at like 1 p.m. because we'd stayed up all morning and obviously like we just lost two rangers and like six other injured. And uh, the very next day it was like 10 p.m. We rolled out and hit and I was like first through that door and I just went, Ugh. I remember just going like, I did it and I didn't stall, but I was yeah, just, yeah. there was this fucking pitted gut in my, because I just literally 12 <laughs> hours before been into right. a fucking massive gunfight in a, in a fucking house with multiple suicide bombers and like it was just a shit show so to be honest with you when i was stacking on that door i went i don't like this like i, I don't like this um it was a dry hole in that one but that that prompted a a, a conversation that i had to have with myself because i was like i got more years in here and i want to be a fucking real bad motherfucker and it's like that's that's one of those moments i think fear could have capitalized and a lot of people i've seen would have taken that fear and let it control them. And then they would have gone, Hey, I'm going to go to the S shop. I'm going to be an armor. But for me, I said, fuck that. I want to go be like what I was meant to be. And so I went right. to ranger school, came back and was a team leader. But that was, that was arguably that I remember that the fucking, we were setting that breach my stomach. I was just like, oh, fuck this shit, dude. Cause in my expectation, I was just like, I'm just gonna get ripped in half by an AK 47. Yeah. And then, I, but that always, that, but I think those are like growth moments where that, if I wouldn't have had that like trepidation and fear, I wouldn't have, been i think as successful as a human as i am past that because i just was like fuck it <laughs> like it's either now or in like 20 years or in 10 years but sure. like the, the 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 fear doesn't limit the consequence the fear has nothing to do with it that should be like an emotional like uh indicator that i need to perform mm -hmm. like as high as i can and and yeah that was yeah so do you do you have a method in turning it off because obviously you know, you're no longer stacked up on doors, but there's things that you approach now that 
give you fear. So do you have a, a method in turning it off? Or I don't, do you just not do things that give you fear anymore? I don't know. I mean, I think, I, I don't know. I mean, that's probably why I've been hurt so much in the last, like, couple of years because I keep trying to find ways to get my adrenaline going and it don't work until right. I'm doing a 360 on the ground. Um, no, I don't know. Fear is an interesting thing. I, I, I think it's, it's for me, it ropes into adrenaline. But, yeah, I don't, I don't, I guess I haven't been in a circumstance that would, I don't know what would scare me at this point. I mean, maybe right. like losing someone I love, like super close, but I think I've been fairly dis- like desensitized to that recently and over the last couple of years. So I, I don't know. Hmm. I, well, I don't can know, you I don't differentiate know. between anxiety and fear? Yeah. 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 I get anxious a lot. Like yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I do. I do. I worry a lot because I'm just, that's who I am. Um, but that's definitely not fear. It's mm. more of just like, fuck, I have to solve all these problems and I try to throw more in the ruck to do it, which is actually makes me less efficient as a human. Mm. But I think that that's the one thing that like in, in life that I've realized is so important is emotional intelligence, because if you let your emotions control you, they do really weird things to your body. But if you understand like, why the fuck am I feeling anxious right now? And if you can't pin it, then you got to go like activate something to get rid of it. Like get in the sun, go for a run, see some fucking trees. And, um, but a lot of people I've seen fail in their careers and at life are they, they let their emotion take over them. And then that turns into resentment and then they blame the world for all their problems instead of going like, it's fucking me. Like, yeah, I was born alone. Like I got to build a tribe, build family, build community. Hopefully we just hang together and live a dope ass life where I kick the bucket. Do you, um, do you think alcohol helps you? In what way? Deal with anxiety or become better, a better human? No. In what way? Just just a general question. No, I think like alcohol has an ability to, if you're feeling super anxious and you have a glass of wine, it it shuts down certain parts of your brain where you're like, oh, fuck it. But then the latter effect of that will just make it worse because you don't sleep as much and all all the other stuff. So, Well, I I mean, more from a general perspective, uh, as a veteran community, do you think that the veteran community benefits from the use of alcohol? Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. The worst shit I've ever had. a leading question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. No, I mean that like, you know, I've, (laughs) I've been a drinker most of my life and I've, I've sorted through that fairly reasonably, but I mean, it's why I sit on like the Warriors Heart Foundation, because I think certain people that are in certain positions in their life can't say enough is Mm -hmm. enough. Um, And I do it all the time. Like I went sober for like over two weeks. Um, and and I I love doing that shit because getting fit, but that's why like the Warriors Heart Foundation, you see these guys that they wake up at eight in the morning and they're doing like a whole French press of vodka or whatever it is. And that's how they live their life all day. And they have families and they ruin their careers and their jobs. And that's why I believe in that shit so much because you see the outcome. It was just a substance abuse issue. It People convince themselves sometimes that like, through anxiety or they had PTS or whatever the fuck, but they have a substance addiction problem. Mm-hmm. That's it. And once you clear them up and put them on a good path, like fucking 180 in life, man. Yeah. And do you think that you have, uh, do you think you have PTS? Uh, no, I, I, so that's interesting. Tyler Gray, who did his documentary, he, I don't know exactly how he'd said it. It's been, it's been a couple of years since I read it, but it's like lack of, of uh, like, yeah, I just yeah. don't have enough shit that gets me going. And, and to right. be honest with you, and this is sound like super cocky, but it's weird. Like when you live a life and you, when you're playing the favorite, your favorite game in the entire world, but you got the pr- princess, you got a little bit of coin, mm. you've done everything like sometimes it's hard to feel that, like feel invigorated. And that's sometimes I run into that at this point in my life. Like, what, what do I want to do? Like make a movie, did that. Like, let's make music. I've done that. Okay. Like, like I used to be a hoe, like had sex with a lot of bitches or whatever. And women weird flex is weird. flex. Super flex. Yeah. So I don't, maybe dudes are next, you know, (laughs) (laughs) check them off, check them off. Yeah. No, I think like what's next is like often my, the biggest struggle I have and hurdle in my life today is like what's next and how do I keep, how do I keep shit interesting? Yeah, I can see that. But the philanthropic side of our business, like that's what always is like that, like kind of wall that keeps me super going because a lot of people haven't been in the fortune opportunities that I've had in my life. And so giving them an opportunity to like live and feel life, that's, that's what fucking gets me going. Yeah, I can see that. Like, I think, like I, I have a problem because I like. I think there's a paper all circulated around. It's called operator syndrome. Have you ever heard of this? No. Yeah, it's very similar to that. So it's like, it's you know guys that have been in the mix for the majority of their lives. Like they, 
they, they've been on this treadmill, right? And I'm not going to do it justice. So I'll just put a link into it. We were talking, I was talking, I was talking about that with uh, Kevin Reeves this morning. Nice. And we were talking about operator syndrome and how it affects a bunch of people like, like us, because we've got to, we got to keep, got to keep things interesting. And I see it in the community quite a bit because I think that guys create drama when they don't need to create drama. Like they just, they, they just don't need it. It's like you, you can, and not you, I don't see it with you. I don't see it with, with Jared, but they gaslight each other. Yeah. So they'll just go out and make up a bunch of horse shit. Or, and I say, I, when I say this make up, it's actually the, the definition would be making mountains out of molehills. Yeah. It's, oh my God, can you believe this? And it's like, so yeah, I, I like to use this one as a good example. It's like when people come in and they're like, can you believe so-and-so is fucking so-and-so? And it's like, yeah, they're humans. They that's what they're designed yeah, they're to do. Attractive they're, people. They're biologically <laughs> yeah. predestined to fuck each other, by yeah. the way. Like that's kind of the whole thing. Like yeah. like there's two yeah. things you're kind of guaranteed to do in life, you know, or three or four or whatever it is. Like you're gonna be born, you're gonna die, you're gonna eat, you're gonna shit, and you're gonna you're gonna fuck. Try to have yeah, at least I, I don't know how to tell it. And <laughs> I, maybe it's like telling people that Santa Claus isn't real, but yeah, man, like yeah. people do that. And oh, by yeah. the way, sometimes they do that outside of their marriages. I hope I didn't yeah. ruin it. You know, I hope the tooth fairy is also not real <laughs> and Santa Claus doesn't exist either. I just fucking ruined it for a bunch of people. I know yeah. that's super weird, but I'm like, no, it doesn't surprise me. How the fuck are you yeah. guys surprised by this? Like, it's not. And by the way, this isn't an admittance of anything. I'm not trying to be like on our podcast, like telling anyone anything. It's just, I talk about this all the time with my wife where I'm like, why the fuck are these people surprised? Oh, oh my God. Can you believe that, you know, Susie's fucking Dale? Yeah. And that's like, can't you believe that? They're married and they go to church. I'm like, yeah, no shit. Yeah. Well, like well, half those people well, in the church that go to church are also fucking somebody else statistically. Yeah. Bored people just like, you know, they, they buy into the drama and then they virtue single to be like, can you believe how disgusting? Oh and they do the same thing uh, when the door's closed. And uh, that's just humans, though. I've kind of it's figured humans. out like and, and it's like They're the gross. more honest you can be with yourself, I think the better. And yeah, the operator syndrome is an interesting thing. I, I, I think a lot of the guys and gals, especially during like the heavy parts of the war. Yeah, I think it's the, the time has been a long enough now where I think a lot of people are just like. It's like the what's next thing because yeah i mean i told you that story it was like when we were when we were doing free fall man i was like that first jump i was standing on the back first one out and i was like dude i felt nothing i wasn't scared i wasn't nervous and it actually fucked with me because in my brain when i'm standing there like at the 30 second yeah, yeah, call yeah. i'm going yeah. my, my my whole time going through my brain i was like bro why am i not like i need to be locked on and a little nervous just you know and it, it kind of made me like, fuck, I got a whole task list I got to run through my hair about like, or my head through yeah. like how I'm going to pitch and get my, my my position and then the things I have to go through in free fall. But I didn't feel anything. And that was like concerning to me. I was like, why didn't like I'm about to jump out of a perfectly good airplane and and I'd never, you know, free fall before. I have quite a few static line jumps, but it did nothing for me. And that's one of those hey. things where I'm like, fuck, what, what do you do at this point in your life to get that? You feeling do, like, well, I mean, for me, uh, that's, that's where I was. That's, that's exactly where I was for years. Like nothing. It, it meant nothing for me to do anything. I had no feeling, but then I had kids and I rebuilt. Yeah. Like, like, Oh my God, I love them so much. I can't jeopardize this thing that I have. I can't jeopardize this relationship with my children by doing something foolish. So then it, 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 it makes me feel again because now like, you know, I love these two amazing children so much. It's literally like the the greatest thing in my life. Like the way I kind of rank and file every priority that I have in my life is like my family, my business, myself, right? It's like, who cares about me? Everything is like, that's exactly the way that I, I kind of prioritize everything, which is, I just love them so much. I can't, like the only thing I was thinking about in this circumstance, which was like so new for me, because as I was doing a bunch of really dangerous shit previously in my life, I didn't give a shit what I did. I could have been you like, "You can be selfish. I, I can be fuck. like, whatever, man. Oh, my mom's gonna cry. No, whatever. Oh God, <laughs> yeah. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like it's like, who cares? People are gonna forget about me in two weeks. Don't care. And 
a lot of those people haven't seen me in two years anyway. It doesn't matter. They probably already assume that I'm already dead or what, whatever it is. Yeah. It's like it meant nothing for me to do anything. And now I'm like, shit, man, we have like 900 employees. And like, I like going to these Christmas parties. I like, you know, high five and, and, you know, telling dick jokes in, in, in the halls here, you know, but the single greatest thing in my life, which will never be surpassed by anything is just hugging my kids. And 100%. It's like, like that's kind of like the awesome. evolution of being a man is is right. creating that family component. But it's interesting when you don't want kids like me. Yeah, but you're 36. Like, I mean, I think eventually you might actually turn the corner because I didn't want kids at all. Like, one, I didn't think I was going to live past the age of 30. Two, I just didn't really have any desire for them whatsoever because I, I just felt like if I'm going to dedicate myself to the 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 art of war you can't have any emotional baggage, which I was actually a hundred percent correct because it, it allows you to be a lot more emotionally efficient and, yeah. and you can, uh, and, and I know there's a lot of guys that, that can be very successful and have children and do that profession. I just wasn't one of them. So yeah. it's actually a compliment to them because I, I couldn't do that. I had to be yeah. very unrestricted. I couldn't have an emotional connection to, uh, a spouse or a significant other. I couldn't have children. I, I just couldn't do any yeah. of that. I broke up with every girlfriend in four deployments because mm -hmm. I was like, nah. Yeah. Well, and I think Logan said it. It's like, um, you know, committing yourself. You know, he said it in, in that little short doc that he did, which was like, you know, we're going to take the blood back. Like, I remember feeling that so acutely, like, hey, let's take the, let's take the blood back, right? It's like, right. let's, let's earn it back as if you were going to compensate for the loss or your emotional right. loss by, you know, creating more, but that doesn't work. It's never worked actually well, it, in, the, in the, in the, in the history yeah. of human warfare, it only makes you feel better for a short amount of time before yeah. it catches back up with you. Yeah. And I feel like, <clears throat> like just since we're getting on some real shit, like I, I've never really discussed this, like, to anybody but i feel like i I've, I've had to like in the last like probably two years like really really deep dive into my brain and figure out where i'm at in life because i don't think a lot of people realize like i went through a transition in los angeles and the second i went back started working contracting mm -hmm. deploying a fuck ton i kind of got like famous during that yeah. point like and then i was overseas with people recognizing me and that are like gunfighters in the same profession doing whatever right and then I got out and I had this like catapult of inertia behind me. And so all I did was mask that transition with fucking alcohol and women and like we're making videos and we're like, it was just, you never had to think at that point mm -hmm. because it was like, make a video. We're going to this thing. It like, there was never a moment where you had an idle mind. And I don't right. think I really had one until probably two years ago to actually think about, oh shit, what's the plan for maybe the next 20 years? Like I might fucking live until I'm fucking 60, bro. <laughs> it's weird, like, isn't it? What? And, yeah. and, you know, because once you get like a house, you kind of settled in, you're like, this is the, the somewhat perma solution for the next foreseeable future. I think my brain went, oh fuck, because I've, I've always been like a, like a, not a, what would be the word? Like a drifter, you know, mm -hmm. where, because I kind of raised myself super early young, like when I was young and just did my own thing and then joined the military by myself and just, I did always, I've always been a loner. You, you. I was super loner. When I, yeah. <laughs> when I, when I met you, um, you had that bumper sticker, which is, you know, not all those who wander are lost or something like that. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> That's funny. Not all who wander are lost. <laughs> yeah. It's been a hell of a ride though. It's, it's, it's cool though. It's just like, uh, you know, I would, to what we said last podcast that you and I were on, it's like, I, I look up to guys like Clint trial and stuff where it's mm -hmm. like challenge accepted. Yeah. And it's, I think life, life conditions you and will, will tenderize you sometimes sure. for being weak. And it's, you just have to reevaluate and be like, dude, I'm fucking strong as fuck. Not in a physical sense necessarily, but in a mental sense. Well, you Cause are. that's everything. I've seen your, your deadlift is you know? quite impressive. I'm not, I'm not I mean, that weak. The technique is not that great, but I mean, it's strength. You're compensating for bad technique. I right, right, yeah. right. It's yeah. just, it's, it's America's ass. It's really those glutes that just fucking get going. Hey, I have a plan and I want to see if anybody on the, the podcast is down for this. Let's do, we've talked about this in the, in, okay. in the past. Yeah, yeah. I want to do like the, um, like the tactical calendar and we mm. get all of our friends. So we get like Matt Carricker, yeah, yeah. me, you, who are, Caleb idea. Francis and, and we, awesome. we all do really sexy <clears throat> poses for each one of the months. And then we just sell it and all the proceeds go to charity. 
my goal is I just want to get on like Fox and Friends because they're right. fucking awesome to us and hold up like a gun bunny dude fucking calendar and be like all the proceeds go to fucking boot camp bait or the BRCC fund. I think it would just be awesome. Yeah. Plus, Cause be like funny. the hotshot calendars do that, but we could get it maybe overseas and you if know, you just, just want to make a, if you just want to make a hot dude calendar, like you can do I that on your own. Yeah, it's that... true. <laughs> but I just see like Caleb Francis laying oh, on like yeah. a bear rug yeah, with yeah. like one of his, like a TP nine just sitting yeah. there. Oh man. I like that a lot. I, I really like that idea. I think uh, I think we should do it. I think we should just do it, and then it's we'll, so we'll easy. ask for permission later. Hmm. What is that thing? It's like that saying. It's like it's better to ask, ask for forgiveness than ask for permission. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just do it. I, I I like it. Yeah. Well, it's good having you here on the show, Matt. You know, I mean, I know it's, it's great. Like I haven't even been on my own podcast. Your own for a podcast. While. No, it's it was good. We wanted to do a quick podcast, catch up, hang out, and uh, till the next time. Hey, fuck off, Jared, by the way. Yeah, fuck you, you, Jared. Yeah, yeah, we don't need you. (laughs) All right, see you guys. That concludes today's training. Any questions? (laughs) Woo! Drum titties, boy!